What skills do I need as a mechanical engineer? What things should I know at a minimum? I see these questions pretty often, and the assumption sometimes is that if you know this, this, and this skill, then you'll be more desirable for employers and you'll have a much easier time finding work. But that's not how it works. While technical skills are certainly important, what gets overlooked a lot are your people skills, how you work with others, how you communicate, your attitude, leadership, your work ethic, discipline, your preparation. Now, this video would be highly unsatisfying if my answer was to just go work on yourself and listen to a bunch of Gary Vee sound bites. So I'll do my best to get a little more specific, but there's a couple of things you should know first about mechanical. One, it's very competitive. Graduates of mechanical engineering outnumber electric and civil graduates by almost three to one for what seems to be a similar number of jobs. The world is definitely becoming more digitized, but given that we'll always need physical systems, I don't think mechanical is going anywhere. In addition, the space industry is booming. There's high demand for renewables, EVs, robotics, and so on. So I think mechanical is in a relatively fine place, but it's competitive. Two, it's very broad. I'm not going to be specifying too many softwares, for example, because there's just so many different industries that involve mechanicals. While it can be a good thing to have so many different fields to work in, I would try and specialize while you're in school. Get an idea for the field that you want to be in, get internships in that field. I think you put yourself in a better position when you graduate. I'm breaking this down into three different types of skills. We'll start with the technical ones. Here are a few in no particular order that might benefit you to know. One, FEA and CFD. Simulations are something you'll very likely encounter in your career. Understanding the fundamentals is important. How they work, how to set one up, applying appropriate loads and boundary conditions, creating a mesh, debugging. In school, you're usually given the option of taking either FEA or CFD. I would take both. As far as softwares go, it really depends on your situation. A bigger company might be using expensive ones like Ansys or Comsol that are a bit easier to use. Smaller companies might be going with some open source ones. Sometimes you'll end up using the, the ones that are integrated with your CAD software. I would try and utilize your student license as much as you can. Do as many different types of simulations as you can so you get a feel for it. Number two, CAD modeling. CAD is something you'll definitely see in your career. You should have some fundamentals down both for modeling and drawing. In my experience, a lot of CAD is learned on the job. The designs that you're going to be building and the software that you're going to be using will ultimately depend on the industry you're in and the company that you work for. I would pick one or probably two programs to learn. I think CAD skills are pretty easily transferable and there's just so many good tutorials out there that it makes it easy to kind of pick up and learn on the job. Number three, programming. It's pretty obvious that programming is a huge part of our world and our future. Development of AI, self-driving cars, robotics, machine learning. Languages like Python are becoming very popular. We use programming for analysis, data acquisition. It's a very powerful tool. A good benefit to learning it too is that you can, you can get good at it and even transition to a software position. And if you have a hardware background to go along with it, that's a pretty big benefit. Number four, instrumentation and electronics. All tests require some sort of electric data acquisition system. And in my experience, it's usually been the Mechies that have set those up. Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, sensors, data acquisition systems, how something gets from input to output is a good thing to learn. I like the practicality of these ones. You can literally buy an Arduino and just start messing with it at home. It'll help you understand electric theory a lot better and how these circuits all work. Number five, technical knowledge. Software will refine your designs, but most designs are started off with hand calculations. It's a good idea to be sharp in areas like thermodynamics, fluids, structure, analysis, heat transfer, materials. You'll find these concepts in nearly every industry. Six, general software. Excel is widely used by a lot of engineers. That's a good one to learn. MathCAD or SMath, I've used that throughout my career. MATLAB is a popular one. These are just to name a few. All right, the second skill we're gonna talk about is experience. You see what he's doing, right? He's using circuit or logic. Should bring him down. Yeah. Disgusting. How do you get experience without experience? Yeah, it's frustrating, I understand. But I have to mention it because it is the first thing that employers look for. The best thing you can do is to join your school's co-op program. You'll be obligated to do a number of internships. And while that does mean that you'll be in school for a little bit longer, you'll be more prepared for when you come out. You'll have more opportunities. You know what industry you want to be in. You'll probably get a higher salary. And you'll learn all those skills that I talked about. Another way to get experience, join your school's engineering clubs. These are fantastic environments where you can learn how to work with people. You'll learn some shop skills, how to use a wrench, a drill, a saw, different measuring tools, how to 3D print, soldering, 
how to use a grinder, maybe even how to weld. I used to hear one of my seniors say that he would hire a farm boy any day of the week. I want you guys to keep that in mind. Lastly, we'll talk about soft skills. Let's start with attitude. Attitude can be the reason that you get a job or that you don't get a job. Skills can be taught over time, but attitude, you have to come in with a good attitude right away. Do you have good energy? Are you positive? Do you smile a lot? Are you outgoing? Can you hold a conversation? Are you a hard worker? Do you get distracted easily? Do you complain a lot? Or are you just kind of, you know, I know what I need to do. I'm going to go do it. Be able to have a conversation. A good interview is a conversation. Be positive, smile. I sound like Ellen here, but it may be kind of cliche, but 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 it matters. Believe me, it matters. To le it will leave a lasting impression on your employers. Preparation. Probably one of the most important skills to have. Everyone values someone who's prepared. If you land an interview, you need to study for it like an exam. Learn everything about the company, who they are, what their mission is, what their industry is like, what their challenges are, what their latest press releases have said. You need to come in with questions, good questions, at least three questions that you're going to ask them. And you need to have good answers for what they're going to ask you for how you can add value. Work on this in your group projects. Come in more prepared than your colleagues. You will naturally start to take on leadership roles. They will start to, uh, to entrust you with more responsibilities. Communication. Can you talk to people? Can you coordinate? Can you send emails? Do you know how to talk to this person versus this person versus your boss? I used to take Toastmasters classes back in my previous job, things that, you know, push me out of my comfort zone. Um, and even working in a group sometimes can be uncomfortable when you have to speak up in, in front of four or five people, but you got to do it. Writing. People send me resumes to review from time to time, and most of them are terrible. And I know it's hard to write a resume when you have limited work experience. But if you can't demonstrate basic things like proper grammar, not using passive language, uh, quantifying your results, I see a lot of resumes that they just list, oh, I was involved in this, I helped out in this, I assisted in this, and not, not not, not showing anything impressive. What were your results? I made a whole video on resumes and it's surprising to me. People send me their resumes where they, they haven't revised anything. It's like, I just, I gave you some tools. You got to be able to use them. That's another thing. You got to do the work. You have to know why what you're presenting is not good and how you can improve it and learn from people. I think that's enough skills for one video. This is sort of a general overview of good skills to have based on my own experience. Do you have to know everything? You do not. I don't know half of those technical skills I mentioned. Experience and attitude will take you a long way. Get in early, get some summer jobs, get some tech jobs, bring a good attitude, be positive, work hard, talk to people, listen to Gary Vee. <laughs> uh, work hard, man, be disciplined, all that stuff. Please like and subscribe. And um, yeah. Cool. I'm really glad I got this one out. And I think, uh, I think you guys hope, hope we get something out of it. Thank you for watching. We will, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Love you.